Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. What's going on? If you're listening to this podcast for the first time or watching it on YouTube, what's going on? Like I said, my name is Jersey. I hope you like it and I hope it doesn't suck and I hope that you feel like maybe watching another episode or two. This is episode number 60, so that's 60 weeks straight of the show. 30 minute podcast comes out every Friday, so you have lots to catch up on some episodes better than others so go back and check it all out uh definitely appreciate that and make sure if you like this to give the thumbs up uh if you are one of the cool kids if you are somebody who watches the show every single week you always give us a thumbs up and you comment what's going on it is because of you that i continue to do the show and uh, I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Now, the third tier, if you are one of the elite cool kids, somebody who does all that stuff, you've given the thumbs up, and you buy your supplies through me, then what is going on is because of you that I get real marshmallows in my cereal. So thank you very, very much uh, for doing that. And if you want to buy your supplies through me, my number direct is 862-312-2026. Yes, that's my cell phone. Yes, you can text that, anything from I like turtles to I want to order what's in my cart, please do. That's definitely what it's there for. We're here to help, so definitely let me know. Um, one other thing that we're doing every single week is I want to give you a countdown right now. If you haven't clicked the thumbs up, do it. It shows everybody that people are watching and actually liking this video. So do it right now. If you haven't clicked the thumbs up and you're on YouTube right now, Go ahead and click it in three, two, one. Click the thumbs up and it's very, very much appreciated. If you are listening to this on YouTube uh, or a podcast, go ahead and share the content and uh, give us a review. And that would be awesome. Uh, I have a bunch of shout outs this week. I have been inundated with a bunch of people, the elite cool kids, that have just been like, hey, I got orders in my carts. And uh, I always, always, always have dozens and dozens of people that do this, but I can only pick out so many, but I got a ton of them this week. I want to say what's up to Ashton Stevens. I want to say what's up to Dale Lyson. Um, I want to say what's going on to David Rodriguez, the man, Mr. Andy Gaffey, uh, Fast Mike. What's going on, man? He is a character. And uh, John Trevlin. John, I knew, I knew I talked to you and I was going to tell you I was going to butcher your name. What's going on anyway, man? Thanks to everybody. Again, if you were one of the elites, uh, I really, really genuinely appreciate it. So, uh, the winner of this th- last week, by the way, we're giving away a swag bag uh, of goodies. It's Nicholas Wright. Uh, Nicholas, if you're watching, just email me your information, Josh, at Window Cleaning Resource. Nicholas won a $50 credit for Window Cleaning Resource and the swag bag, which is the shirt and the stickers and the whole getup. So, if you want to win, all you got to do is comment on YouTube, anything. Tell me you like the show, comment about what we're talking about, and you're entered into automatically win. One more thing before we get into it, I'm talking the huge convention that is coming up super, super fast, and my special, special guest today is going to be there, so you have to come and see steve and everybody else. A huge convention is August 23rd and 24th, and it is going to be in Atlanta this year, so if you haven't gotten your tickets, go to thehugeconvention.com. Buy your tickets because the price continues to go up. No, you can't get a sale price now. It's too late. No, you can't come to the door and get a sale price. It's just not going to happen. It's not how it works. So do it now. The Marriott is actually completely booked out. So you can't even stay at that hotel. But there's a ton of hotels right there that you can. So go and do that. And uh, yeah, that would be amazing. So anyway, with all that jargon done, (sighs) welcome to this week's episode. We're talking about F the haters and today we're talking with steve-o from steve-o the window cleaner what's going on man what's up <laughs> yep. that's Always a long haters out there <laughs> that's a long like bs thing to just have to sit there like smiling as i just babble my like intro that's it's a, should... it's impressive though you <laughs> do it like just so smooth that i was sitting here just wow <laughs> it's it's so fast because i get complaints people are like you talk too much in the beginning just get to the show but that's cool i got really nice people who watch my show who aren't haters at all that will like link the minute that my show actually starts so people don't have to watch all the intro stuff so <laughs> there you go get to the important stuff now. right joking. yeah yeah so, but yeah, we're talking about F the haters and, uh, I really thought this would be a pretty awesome episode to kind of have you on. Uh, first off, if people don't know who you are, they're under a rock anyway, but tell us kind of 
your digs, your YouTube channel, what you do. Give us a bio. So about four years ago, I started a YouTube channel called Stevo. Um, it wasn't, I didn't have the window cleaning on there. I just uploaded every once in a while. I started at a company, a uh, franchise company, cleaning windows, and uh, and then eventually branched off and started working for the company I work for now, where I became a co-owner. And um, the whole YouTube thing has kind of taken off with uh, a bunch of other guys. It's been a really great experience. I've learned so much, been able to um, use a lot of different tools that have just taught me so much more about the business and meeting so many people inside of YouTube and talking to new business owners, veterans of the business. It's just been, it's been a crazy world and especially the past year being able to kind of collaborate with WCR. It's just been, it's been an awesome ride. Nice. Nice. So, you know, through all of that, you've never dealt with somebody who's been like a complete a-hole to you, right? I mean, it's been just a breeze. You just kind of floated. No, um, <laughs> I, I, in the beginning on YouTube, I mean, it's, it's really hard to get on there and take, you'll upload a video and people will just criticize you up and down. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? You're yeah. leaving soap, you're leaving soap in the corner. You're not cleaning that window fast enough. You should have it done in 15 seconds and you're getting it done in 16 <laughs> seconds. I yeah. mean, uh, me and poles and blades had a long time of going back and forth. Love the guy. I know he loves me too, but we've always gone back and forth on YouTube. <laughs> Haven't talked to the guy in probably five months now since the last time we went back and forth and uh, bantered back and forth. But yeah, I in the beginning when someone would comment and, and hate on one of my videos, you know, I'd always answer them back and, you know, try to argue with them about what they said was wrong and, and now I've gotten to the point where it happens so often I just <laughs> I just like it I just like the comment and say th- and say thank you and that's all you can do anymore is just you know take the criticism as you go and uh, you know Josh you said something to me one time that you know has stuck with me now since ever you said it and it's kind of like to I have to know the person and really value their opinion um, to really pay attention to it. And ever since yeah. you told me that once, I, I just kind of keep that in the back of my mind every time I read a, a mean comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's really truly it. That's like in anything in your life, if you don't, I have to value your opinion to be hurt by your opinion, you know? And that's like, if it's your wife or spouse or somebody who's saying that, then yeah, that feels like crap. But if it's some Joe Sh- Schmo who's like, ah, water fed stupid, you just go, okay, that's cool, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, but no. I, I think the funny thing about it is not just the YouTube channel stuff, but all of us who started businesses, like there's so much hate going on and like, wh- how, what are you doing? How are you? St- you're starting a business? Oh my God, you're going to fail. Oh, you're going to, what are you doing that for? That's like, uh, you're going to clean bird poop off a window? Really? That's what you're going to do? Like, I think it's everywhere. And I think that, uh, I, I think everybody kind of has to deal with, with kind of the crap. Oh yeah. I, uh. You know, actually, one of, I don't want to call her a hater because it's my mom. (laughs) (laughs) But one of the biggest people who was, like, really against, I think, me window cleaning was my mother. Um, I had a college degree in criminal justice. And for her, she was a paralegal. Her biggest thing for me was become a police officer. And I just, like, I, I tried, I tried, I tried, and it didn't work out. And I started cleaning windows and it was always like, so when are you going to go into police <laughs> academy? Are you going to quit your job soon or what are you going to do? And yeah. um, really in the past couple of years, um, so two years ago is when I became a co-owner of a company. But before then I had been with this guy for three years and uh, he had actually cleaned my mom's windows when I lived in a different city and she loved him so much that she connected us together. And that's how I met the guy now that I own the company with. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, like, my biggest hater has become my biggest supporter. Um, she'll even share, like, my window cleaning resource videos on Facebook to her friends. And I'm like, <laughs> nice. ah, like, Ma, don't, don't do that. Like, just keep that inside the pearl window cleaning groups. If you see it, just watch it, but don't share it to everybody. So, like... Did you yeah, see? Def- did you see Doris says you're such a handsome boy? And that's what it says uh-huh. in the comments. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, I... Cleaning- Go ahead. 
No, no, I was just going to say that that literally we were talking kind of before this. And I remember I've always had like little businesses kind of on the side. And I remember when I thought this is it like this. I looked into it. I did my research. I'd gotten my like starter kit, you know, and I was doing it on the side. And I my uncle had owned a company at the time or still does. And I was with him and my stepdad. We're sitting at the kitchen table. We're talking. I said, I, I got it figured out. I think I know what I'm going to do. And they're like, yeah, I said, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to be a window cleaner. And they both just looked at each other and went, <laughs> literally like cartoon style just like (laughs) laughed at me and i'm i'm like oh my god like i just i now i have to show you i just have to like force this down your throat that i could be successful at this but that's what people are doing like when these people and i'm talking about everybody who's watching and listening if you've posted a video or a facebook thing i mean it's boomed lately and people just come on and hate like even in your life if you've never posted a video and somebody comes on and just tells you that that's the dumbest thing the point is is that they're trying to like protect you like your mom was right like i'm protecting you from being a little poor window cleaner when you could be a respected police officer but yet at the same time she's got somebody at her house cleaning windows for like 100 bucks an hour never putting the two to two together which by the way this industry the kind of the cool part of it is that um you know nobody really puts it together like we had people this is no joke uh, we were training a new person, so I was on site. We had four people, me and three other people, and this lady was just yelling at her daughter, yelling at her daughter, yelling, yelling, yelling. Now, the windows are open. We're cleaning the windows, obviously. And she says, if you don't keep messing around, with other words, you're going to end up like these guys cleaning windows. <laughs> and like everybody kind of like looked at me and was like, oh, really? Well, we got back and figured that the hourly rate was like $98 an hour is what we made on that house. Like. Really, she's gonna do so bad that she makes ninety eight bucks an hour. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't think that people who have never um, had a window clean business or worked for a window clean business, they don't understand the amount that you can truly make. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that was the biggest surprise I think to even my friends, family when I actually tell them like, no, like this is how much hourly you can, you know, <laughs> price things at. I mean, it's insane. It's just, nobody will pay that. Well, they do every yeah. single day. That's what I charge. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's crazy to me. It's crazy. Yeah. The other nice thing is the freedom that people don't quite understand either. Like, yeah, you, you work at your safe nine to five, right? In the beginning, one of the things on, on entrepreneurs in general is we are a little bit crazy. We have ADD, right? But we also like the thrill. And the thrill is always kind of running that line in the beginning. Like, there's nothing. Let's make something from nothing. So a, a person who loves to be safe, you know, like my, you know, dad and, and uncle and your mom, like, they like to be safe. And the safe way is to get a job who they're going to be secured. Your money's going to. But we like that challenge. We like to create something from nothing. And that's part of the adventure of doing all this is kind of creating something and like the gamble, like it could suck. And every one of us has had like seasons where like, Oh my gosh, like I, I don't know, you know, what, what bill am I not going to pay this month so that I could pay this other one? Like everybody goes through that in business. That's just, yeah. that's kind yep. of the, not the fun looking back on it. It's fun, but not as it's happening, I guess. Well, it's, it's scary because I think with window cleaning, it's always with any of our accounts, if there's budget cuts or anything, it's almost like the first thing to go. They say, yeah. they they call us up and say, you know what, we got them to cut back. Uh, it happened to us over a year ago with one of our biggest accounts. Yeah. They call us and said, we were doing them every month and they cut back to every quarter. And it was huge though for every month to do that account. And then, yeah. but it's just sometimes it's it's the first thing to go. And um, it, it, it sucks, but it, it, it's, if I was to own a company and say I had, you know, something different than window cleaning and I had to do budget cuts, that would probably be the first thing I would cut off because yeah. I could have my employees could do it. They're not going to do as good of a job, but I could have them do it for a little bit. So that's that's the scary thing with it. And it's like I think I forget what year it was. I wasn't actually window cleaning at the time, but when the whole market crashed. 2008-ish, yeah. 2008-ish. And I, I worked for some um, the company back then. They told me that back then, I mean, it was just like – it just totally slumped and it was just crazy, you know? So I hope that never happens again. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Well, here's the fun thing too, is that if you get fired one time at a normal nine to five job, you lose your job. You make no money. You got to be fired like a thousand times for you to make no money. Like think about the security that we actually do have as much as we're always on that edge. If Mm -hmm. everything went to hell right now, you could pick the exact accounts you want 
fire everybody, get rid of all the trucks and everything, and you could make an exact living doing just those couple jobs and still have tons of freedom. So it's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. I, I would love yeah. to hear, too, if, if you are watching this on YouTube, comment down below and tell me, like, your worst story. Like, this, these are the fun stories of, like, where somebody kind of, like, you know, made an example of you and, and kind of F the haters. F the haters. Right. What? The other thing I don't quite get is the the hate for equipment. Like like okay, I'm a sales rep, so obviously I I'm on there. My one of my jobs is to monitor Facebook, Instagram, and all that, so I'm on there a lot. So I have to see all of it. But like if I say water fed poles are awesome, and somebody jumps on and like gives me the, the crappy, stupid, ignorant like you're so stupid, it's a, like a they've never used a water fed pole because I've never met a person to use a water fed pole. I know of one guy who already I knew was a tool anyway from other comments that he said that he's like, Oh, well I got a water fed pole. It doesn't work great. And I, I don't use it for everything. Well, that's because you didn't do it wrong. You, you did it one time and all of a sudden now it's not something that you like. So I, I oh, just yeah. don't get it. Now, before I ever understood, I, I thought, Oh, you just need a brush and you have the system and you scrub the window and it's supposed to be clean. Yeah. That's how I literally thought of water fed pole for a long time. And I was never happy with the results just because no one ever taught me correctly. Yeah, yeah. And it was actually until I discovered the window cleaner YouTube channel. I'm not trying to plug. This is seriously how <laughs> I figured it out. And I watched a guy's video who's actually from the same town I am, John Kaiser, great guy. And he was explaining he did a commercial water fed pole video and he did a residential water fed pole video. I watched those videos. I used exactly what he said and boom, everything from then on out came out perfect. And, um, you know, for me also – the, I never understood until just a couple years ago the difference between what different brushes could do as far as, you know, boar hair versus nylon. Um, yeah. I never understood that until I understood it. And I was like, this stuff's amazing. Like, <laughs> I mean, my uh, the other owner that I own the company with, he was when I first started working for him, I think he didn't really understand the the possibilities of water fed pole at the same time i didn't understand it but i knew a little bit more than what he did and as we started learning more and more and more this is the first season where he just whips it out of every job i yeah. mean he's screw ladders i'm whipping this out even first floor i don't care he whips it out and he makes it work i mean and it's it's just been it's awesome and when i see guys post there's one guy on I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> but every time there's a water fed pole picture, he comments ledger, 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 like clean it with a ledger. And it's like, you just don't, I, I love the it. guy, but you just don't understand like the possibilities with these systems are insane. And, yeah. and the overall quality of it, when you use it correctly, you couldn't do a better job by hand. You couldn't. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, uh, the, the one comment that I remember was that actually on one of our ads and it said, uh, I tried it. And it, it didn't work. It's 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 garbage. I'd rather clean with a squeegee. And I said, so you're telling me that the first time you tried something, it didn't turn out absolutely perfect? Of course it's not going to work. Like You know, it's like if I give you a squeegee and a scrubber to somebody who's never cleaned a window, think of that window. It's going to look like a horse sneezed on it, right? So it's the same thing with pure water. It's, I, I just think it's funny. I just... I find it interesting because I, I stay neutral. Like, my thing always has been Switzerland. Like, that's who I am. Like, I could be friends with anybody in the industry who doesn't like the other person. Like, that's fine. I, I'm not in that part. But the big thing is is to have the energy to, like, be a hater, like, in general. Like, just to talk crap. Like, it takes so much work. Like, you get so heated that you're going to go on like type something out and send it for the world to see of something so stupid. It just, it, it, it's mind boggling. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest about this. And, uh, if, if you, if you follow my YouTube channel, you know that there is one tool out there. I, I, I hated on a lot <laughs> and that was the liquidator channel. And that yeah. was only because I couldn't figure the thing out. I just, yeah. it was, it was so, frustrating because i was like i know it can do a great job i see all these other guys using it with such ease why can't i figure this thing out <laughs> and i've hated on it and i've i just have i've gotten rid of the idea that i can even use it so i don't use it at all anymore but like yeah. you know i'm guilty of hating on tools as well yeah yeah and no it does happen but you realize that other people can do it it's not if you can't do something it doesn't mean it's the dumbest thing or it's a fad so that that's mm -hmm. always funny to me i think the other thing yeah. on the hater side of it is customers 
Like customers will write you a bad review about nothing that is bad. There's just some people that won't get, they can't get pleased. There's just, you will, I I just, somebody was on the forums just the other day and I wish I could shout your name out. Um, but they said that uh, they went, this lady followed them in every single room. Uh, you know, as an older woman, every single thing she pointed out rooms they weren't even in yet and talking about the windows and how it didn't get done and this and that. And then he was on the end, like, and then at the end of it, you know, there was a bad review and, and there's just people that just, they're so negative. They're just, they, nobody chooses positivity at that point and they hate on that side of it. Yeah. I've, I've gotten to the point with customers where, um, Especially when I have newer employees with me, and they're like, "What's wrong with this customer?" They're, just, you know, they're following me around the house. They're not happy with anything I do. I say, there are just some customers you cannot make happy. There's yeah. no, no matter how much stuff you did to make everything perfect, you're never going to make them happy. So you just do what you can, and you be happy with the results. And and luckily, we haven't had honestly any bad reviews, you know, up online. But we've definitely received, you know, emails or or calls yeah. about stuff that's been wrong. But it's just, you know, I, there's just some people you can't make happy and they, mm-hmm. and they just want to or, – or, you know, another thing is like you'll be cleaning and the customer will say, well, I could do that. I could do that. I could do what you're doing. And then well, why did you hire us? Why are yeah, we yeah. here? You know? Yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely customer haters out there. Yeah, I just love that. I just – I love those ones too. When you're when you're all done, if you're proud of what you did, you know you did a good. Because if you mess up a window, if you jack something up, obviously tell me I jacked it up. But if you didn't do anything wrong, but they still are complaining, well, you know, and they didn't use towels quick enough uh, on drips, and I would have really <laughs> liked them to, you know, use booties instead of taking their shoes off. But we've had some of the weirdest comments of things of like, uh, we had one lady that uh, called us and she's up in arms. Her and her husband are just up in arms. We left their windows wet, and they were just all wet. And I said, oh, yeah, the guys, did they use the water fit pole? Yeah, they used that water fit pole, and our windows were wet. I said, oh, wow, I'm sorry, did they spot? Well, no, no, the windows look great now, but they when they left, those windows were still wet. I said, so the so windows right now, they're, they're, they look perfect, <laughs> but you're still calling to complain that they left. I mean, what are you going to do? You just, I mean, if you see a review, somebody's got 100 reviews, and they're all five-star that makes me feel like you bought them. But if you see like some of them bad, you know that there's those people out there that are just going to hate you regardless of what goes on. Oh, yeah. no, And, and exactly what you're talking about, the water-fed pool, that has been the hardest thing to get customers to realize what it is. And I've had so many – I had a guy – we weren't we were even done with the house. I haven't even presented the invoice to him <laughs> at the end of the house. And he runs out of the home. What are you guys doing? All my windows are wet. What, you're not going to squeeze them off, no, sir. It's a it's a water fed pole system, and you have to you know you have to dumb it down and say yeah. it takes all the minerals and dirty things out of the water and <laughs> makes your windows sparkle. Yeah. And they're like, uh, I'm not sure. And I always just say to them, if there's any issues, call me. Yeah. If there's any issues and you find that you don't like the results, give me a call. I mean, it takes literally no time at all to come over here, pull it out again, and do the windows again with it. And yeah, I mean that's. The water fed pole is a hard thing to sell to somebody who doesn't realize. I had a lady come out that I've cleaned her home for the water fed pole for five years and she came out and she goes, no ladders today. I said, ma'am, I've cleaned your home with the water fed pole for like five years. Like this should not, this should not be a surprise. Oh, really? And it's always looked good, right? Yep. Yeah. It's annoying. Sorry. I don't know. I don't know what to do with some of you. Know, like, like you said, you just have to be you on some of the stuff and just – you deal with it like this is part of like people always say well wow you make you know what as as an owner you make more money you know how all the employees think you're rich but uh Mm -hmm. you make a little bit more money and they go wow you're so lucky like do you understand what i have to do like i have to put up with all this stuff all the time like i have to have people that just you know that 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 every comment or complaint that comes in has to go through me i have to hear it so it's it is what it is, but you shouldn't ever get to that point where you feel like broken down. Like there's a lot of like beef between people too. If you ever notice, there's like certain people that are angry at other people all the time. And they're, 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 uh, you know, a lot of it is in the pressure washing industry, which uh, I'm in those forum groups too. And I don't quite know why there's such a turf like war thing going on with some of those guys in different areas. But Man, it's just it it's so so much effort and negativity. Yeah, I mean, I think that's been the great thing about the area that I'm in. Um, all of us window cleaning companies, like when we see each other, 
we're always gre- we're always saying hi to each other. Like it, it's kind of weird to me, to be quite honest, because <laughs> where I was before, there was two big companies. We saw each other is like scowl at them from the car, you know, yeah. like throw water on their windows. No, not really. But in in Boulder, pretty much where we go, I mean, I'll be on uh, one of the main streets there, and there'll be five other companies, and we'll all talk. I mean, we'll wave to each other. It's they crazy. always come and say hi. It's awesome. I mean, it's kind of weird to me, but it, it's it's positivity and it makes you, you you don't want to go ever go grab their jobs they kind of tell you like oh i got this job i got that job and you're like well i'm never going to grab your jobs and one time a guy actually he did get our job and then he saw me and he came up and apologized he goes i was just friends with the guys for so many years that's why they yeah. decided to move but i'm not trying to grab your stuff and it's like it's okay man like there's yeah, yeah. enough there's enough work for everyone to be happy you know yeah. so like that that alone why not choose positivity to have that kind of relationship with I got a guy in my area that I am now, and I don't even clean anymore. You guys, a lot of people who watch the show have known that I'm phased out now. I'm all sales, and I'm hands-off on my company that I have now back in Wisconsin. But I did work here, and there's a guy in my neighborhood who he was putting stuff on these groups that I was the reason that he was getting kicked out of these groups and stuff because we lived in the same neighborhood. I didn't care. I wouldn't wouldn't complain anyway. I mean, it's just – it's instant hate that people assume that the other person is going to dislike. And that's why I like these conventions so much too, is like, I didn't know a place like your area existed where you could just actually be friends with competition. Usually it's all, you know, everybody's leery and ah, don't look at my stuff, you know, but you go to a convention, no one hates anybody. Like you just show up and everybody's like on a neutral territory. It's kind of fun. Yeah. that That's the only place where I've ever really seen a high amount of negativity uh, in the workplace was in a company where I worked off commission and I became a manager there and it was crazy the amount of hate for each other because they all wanted the best jobs because yeah. of the commission. Yeah. That's the only time I've worked in a window cleaning company where I've seen that. And it yeah. was it was volatile. I mean, as far as how much uh, crap talking went on to the manager about other employees. Yeah. And that's the only time I've ever seen it. And it was like, it was frustrating. You know, it got really frustrating. It created a lot of arguments at job sites. And um, uh, that's been the worst I've ever seen. Yeah. And it doesn't, when you uh, lower someone else's pillar to try to make you look taller without raising yours, that's like awful. But I could yeah. see that. I, I never did the commission based uh, like cleaning people. I've done commission based sales stuff, but uh, commission based cleaning or tax. I've never done that. And I can see how that could be, you know, there, everybody, there is cake jobs out there where you make a lot more and everybody would know that, you know, that's yeah, too there's, bad. There's jobs where, you know, it's like $600 and the guy gets it done in four hours. He wants that job every time it comes around, but then someone else gets it. And, uh, you know, it, it, yeah. it goes on and on every day with, with, with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Is what it is. But if you're dealing with haters, Tell me your story first off. I'd love to hear it. And second off, don't let them get to you. Because you know what? You don't care about their opinion when it all comes down to it. Everybody has an opinion just like everyone has an asshole. And some just think worse than others. So that's just the, the truth of the matter. But but you're going to be at this huge convention. So uh, I heard rumor that you're giving away free autographs for the oh, first yes. 3,000 people. I think that's what it was. 3,000. After that, ten dollars an autograph. It's and that's it's tight. Easy, you know? you, you, you're cutting that right, at, and there's no leeway on that three thousand mark. So nope, no leeway. That's good. So. You know what I said last time? As I actually said, uh, to, this was before the last one. I said, if you come and see Luke, you can go pet his beard. And he was like, <laughs> I oh. remember that. <laughs> oh, he doesn't like to be touched. And uh, yeah, I said that. And then the next episode, I said, don't touch his beard. Don't touch his beard. So nobody did, but uh, I still think it was funny. That's a it's a very holy beard. It's a very well known beard. You don't want to you don't want to mess is. that up. But you could stare at it. Like I, I feel like you know, like my eyes are up here. Like a couple of times, I was just looking at it. Like I, this is what I got right here. I mean, you have a beard. It's it is what it is. Now fluff. I've met Fluff in person like one time, but now I'm just gonna be staring at his glorious beard too. I don't. Uh huh. I had Draper on the show, and I think we're just gonna wear we're we're both baby face. We're just gonna wear like big uh, costume beards to the convention just to fit in. I think. <laughs> I'm gonna clean shave for the convention. Oh, try to nobody's look, uh, gonna recognize try to, you. Yeah, I'm trying to look snazzy. I feel like in my videos, though, I'm always like, I either have a beard or don't have a beard. In the same video, I'll have a beard and not have a beard. Like, <laughs> I, I'm just. 
especially at this time of year, I get crazy lazy. Like my hair is too long. I, <laughs> I, I, I hate being scruffy because I, I've noticed that when I, if, when I shave, I get way more customers that come up to me or way more potential customers that will come up to me at, especially storefronts, you know, old ladies, when they look at me, have a beard, they kind of scowl and walk away. But then when I'm clean shaven, they're like, Oh, let me get a card, let me clean yeah. the windows, you know. And yeah. so you have a lot of uh, Irish customers. Is that? What yep, that exactly. Oh, exactly. Let me have a card. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've never had that problem. Like I just always been baby faced, and then they they just ask me, "You're too young to clean windows." Then, yeah. yeah, my girlfriend works for me now, and she says, "You look homeless. No one's going to want to come up to you for work." <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't say you're lazy though. This time of year, you're busy. Like busy is different than lazy. You're just. You have to put away like haircuts so that you can make money uh, when you do. Exactly. This time of year, I, I wish I could always enjoy summer more because I love summer. But you know, it's like June, July. Well, May, June, July, just fly by. You know, yeah. It's almost. It, it's just crazy. You know, I feel like. Uh, it, but it's fun. It's exciting. It's like you have to put the work in now, especially when you live in an area where it gets so cold in the winter. You just oh, gotta. Yeah. You gotta do it. You just have to do it. And I, I'm not one that loves working like 10 hour days and we don't do that much. But, um, the guy I work with, he, he's almost 60 years old and he can work for 10, 12 hours a day. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I hope that I have half the energy that he has at his age at, at my, when I get 60 years old, I, yeah, yeah. It, it, it amazes me. That's crazy. It really does. Yeah. Now is he a lot to get into? I know you mentioned some of your videos now he leaves in the winter is that right for a while? So you're not able to like have like a winter house in like Boca Raton or something? No. So actually this year, I think will be the first year where I get to take like a month off. What? So I'm, yeah, I'm going to take probably February off. I might uh, be taking a vacation and uh, it'll be my first, you know, I, I've never had a month off except for when <laughs> I was in college. You know, and that wasn't uh, by choice, it, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I might be going to the Philippines or just taking a a month off to kind of just hang out here. Uh, my girlfriend's dad lives in the Philippines, so we might go there. But um, he was always going to. He had it made. He was going to Costa Rica for the winter, and then uh, me and another guy uh, would just run the business. But he uh, kind of decided that that was uh, that trip. That ship is sailed as far as going to Costa Rica. So he bought like a bought a camper he wants to travel around colorado more discover colorado nice. more and uh he's gonna be gone in january then i'll be gone in february it's gonna be really really Sweet. nice because i i need like a break just from like everything maybe i'll yeah. film a window cleaning video on the philippines and we can put <laughs> nice. that up. yeah we we'll just see what it's like there you never know see, if you work as hard as steve-o then you can just take winters off in the philippines see how that works <laughs> That's how that goes. No, but we do. We like this time of year, like everybody's waiting for that, like slow down a little bit so we can take a break just to breathe and get yeah. back into it. So when I see that first leaf change, you know, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, that time is almost here where I get to just like relax a little bit, not have to work a long day on a Friday. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where it gets dark at like 430 and you're like, okay with that because you could be done and yeah. Yep. Yep. There's no more time in the day. Got to go home. Nice. Well, it's too bad you live in a state that nothing. There's nothing to do in the winter. But I mean, maybe you can find something to do. There's so much to do in Colorado. You can go skiing. <laughs> you can go sledding. There's there's tons of stuff to do. Tons of Snowboarding, stuff to do. skiing, to sledding, inner tubing. Like there's lots of stuff. There's lots of stuff. <laughs> ice skating. You know, figure skating. You know, it's all things I like to do. No. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, hey man, I definitely appreciate you uh, hanging out with me and. We're going to see you in, like, weeks now coming up at the Huge Convention. So that's going to be awesome. We'll uh, we'll get to see if you have a beard or not. That's always exciting. But uh, <laughs> either way, uh, if you're watching uh, to this point, like I always say, every episode, every week we have a code, and this week's code is Stevo. So if you call me, uh, 862-312-2026, and you want to put an order in, if you say Stevo, you get 5% off. Boom. Just yeah. awesome. So hopefully we see you at the convention. Uh, hopefully you bought your tickets already from thehugeconvention.com. And uh, if anything, uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. So thanks for watching. And until next week, go ahead and be epic.